About a month ago, I was on a hike randomly. I'm from Boise, Idaho, and this hike was nearby. I come up this trail, and at the end of it, I found this place. This is the Intermountain Bird Observatory at Lucky Peak in Idaho. It's a pretty fascinating place. I spent a good hour talking to these biologists and these technicians about different songbirds they're catching and all the things they do here. I found it fascinating and having grew up here, I was super surprised I'd never heard of it before. So we're gonna show you around. You're gonna see exactly what they do here. You're gonna see a lot of birds. We got to see owls at night, hawks and, and songbirds during the day. It's pretty amazing. I was super impressed and I hope you enjoy it. This research site has been operating since 1993 as part of an ongoing fall migration project. The biologists, who mainly capture and catalog songbirds, owls, and even raptors like hawks, falcons, and the occasional golden eagle. The health metrics and scientific data collected on each bird goes into a centralized USGS data repository, which provides crucial information that helps researchers and wildlife managers understand these birds and the natural world. Once they've collected all their data, they put a band on each bird's leg and send them on their way. Note that all birds were handled by trained professionals who are licensed bird banders. These birds are not harmed in the process. IBO has processed thousands of birds over the years. The data they collect, the science they conduct, and the education they provide help us make better decisions about managing and conserving our natural resources for us and future generations. Yeah, let's go, let's go round two. Okay. Here we go, round two, sparrow guy. Oh, he's gonna take oh, a side. Oh, oh, there you go. go. <laughs> oh, they're so That's fun. fun. Yeah, being from Idaho, it's been really cool to be able to do this project with my brother. It's definitely different working with birds because they're very quick, fast, and flighty, and darty. Working in action sports, I do shoot a lot of action, so it's fun to translate that from humans to small, small, small critters, <laughs> especially at night. Working with the owls is really fun and that was a good challenge. It's nice to be able to work with wildlife in an effort towards conservation because that's what we all are here for. <laughs> Collar doves, which are a non-native species that have expanded into Idaho and most of North America over the last really 20 years. So we have what we call a mist net triangle here where we have three mist nets that all meet each other surrounding what will be a dove on the ground in the middle and the idea is we flap this dove make it look injured and hawks will come in and try to try to catch it and if they don't notice the net they might fly in and get caught or they get in there and they're trying to catch it and you keep the dove moving and you they eventually sort of hit a net on the way out oh right that's the idea Given season here, we study migration of songbirds, um, diurnal raptors, so hawks, falcons, eagles, and then also small forest owls. The raptors, we start monitoring the, the diurnal raptors, the hawks, eagles, falcons, in the middle of August. So we start counting hawks on August 15th and go through October 28th. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull on a pigeon now and see if I can attract any hawks that might be flying by. Uh, and then we also set up this hawk trap and blind in that usually the second week of August so we can be um, starting to trap hawks by August 15th or so. So August 28th then we'll set up our owl nets and we have a couple different arrays of owl nets in the forest with an audio lure to play the sounds of owls to attract them to come close to the nets and that's targeting especially northern sawwood owls and flammulated owls and so that's been kind of a unique contribution that we now have 25 plus years of um, population data from those species as, as they migrate. This is my sister Kylie Fly. She came all the way up from the great state of Utah to the greater state of Idaho where I am. This is where we grew up and we were super stoked to work on this project together and she was able to reach out to Liberty Mountain. Liberty Mountain is a distributor of all kinds of outdoor gear and they were kind enough to donate some gear to help equip the people here at the Intermountain Bird Observatory with some sleeping bags, some sleeping pads. We've got their Peregrine Anatom Down Sleeping Bag, the Peregrine Pro Stretch Grand Sleeping Pads, and then a bunch of baseball caps and some cool stickers. Also a big shout out to Rocky Talkie. I've done reviews on Rocky Talkie's radios before. 
They make fantastic radios and this mountain radio is among the most popular you'll ever find. These are the kinds of companies that support organizations like this and that's much appreciated. We're gonna surprise these guys with these. They don't know we brought anything up, so we're gonna go grab them and bring them over. All right, we had talked to some of your people before and we understand like camping gear is something you guys kind of need as an organization. Hello. It's not a ton, but it'll hopefully get, help out a little bit and with any luck, we I might have a little bit more straggling later, but we'll see. Oh, so that's, yeah, that's huge. Thank that's you so You're welcome. much. Welcome And check it out, dude. Is that hat not, like, like, you guys, does that not look like something you guys should be wearing? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, it's a bunch of hats. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, yeah just some yeah. fun thanks little for, Thanks for letting us interrupt your Oh, of course. We love, yeah. we love visitors. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's always fun to have people around. It's fun. Getting right into the very latest on the Valley Fire burning near Lucky Peak. At last count, the Bureau of Land Management says it has burned 4,000 acres. The Valley Fire has now burned nearly 10,000 acres. In October of 2024, a wildfire destroyed the Intermountain Bird Observatory's Lucky Peak Research Station right outside my hometown of Boise, Idaho. The fire spread fast. It threatened hundreds of homes and scorched nearly 10,000 acres of public land, including a wildlife management area that provides critical winter range and habitat for mule deer, elk, other big mammals, and also a lot of upland game birds and migratory birds. Thankfully, the IBO crew was able to evacuate safely and firefighters were able to protect most of the structures, but tons of equipment, including camping equipment and research equipment, was lost to the fire, as was a whole bunch of that habitat that brings the birds through that area in the first place. Here's where they had a lot of their owl nuts and it looks, I mean, definitely some trees burned down there. I think they're going to lose some. The brush is gone, but some of these are going to make it okay. Right down there is where the Raptor observation station was. Totally gone, banding station, yeah. This right here isn't part of the film we planned on making, but that fire happened and now they need our help. Please donate to IBO at the link on the screen or down in the description below. If you're local, you can sign up with the Idaho Fish and Game to help restore this habitat. Volunteers have already been collecting native plants like sagebrush that will be replanted in the spring. Some replanting has already taken place. I also want to thank the sponsors and crew that helped make this video possible. Rocky Taki, Liberty Mountain, and White Duck Outdoors all donated camping equipment and relevant equipment that they use in their work. This gear survived the fire and crews will be able to use it next year. Support these brands that support conservation.